Good morning, good afternoon, good evening, wherever you may be. My name is Darren Pope. I'm, de I'm a developer advocate for CloudBees. And today we're going to be talking about some things specifically for Jenkins administrators that may make your life much, much easier. There's times when you're trying to debug a problem that's not necessarily with a job. It may be just about the controller itself. And today we're going to talk about a couple of different ways you can do that. And we're specifically going to be talking about a free service that you can use, completely free, that will make it even easier. Now, today I'm joined by one of my coworkers. Here is Arnaud. Arnaud. Bonjour. Comme ça va? Bonjour. <laughs> Hello, Darin. That's as far as I go. All right. That's that's as far <laughs> as the French goes here. Uh, and since since it is now we're doing this live. This is January the seventh. Right now it's at 9 a.m. Eastern. It is 3 p.m. CET. What does that yeah. stand for? Central European time? Central European time, yeah. Okay. Uh, so that means it must be coffee time somewhere or tea time, right? So I have my water because it's still 9 a.m. <laughs> Arnaud has his coffee. So uh, to everybody, yeah. cheers. It's, it's, it's 9 o'clock somewhere, right? It happens to be here. Now... So if you haven't had your drink yet, go ahead and, and get started. Here we go. Arno is the support tooling manager for CloudBees. Now, Arno and I had talked prior to this. I'm not even going to attempt his last name. <laughs> so Arno, why don't you go ahead and you know say your last name, you can say your whole thing, and explain a little bit, you know, what does a support tooling manager do? <laughs> yes, thanks. Um, this is Arno Héritier. You, you will succeed, uh, I promise. S some year I will, yes, but not Eritier. today. Yeah. <laughs> um, yes. What does the support tooling managers do? Um, since I joined CloudBase, it was five years ago um, as support engineer. And uh, I took the lead of the support activity for a few years. And now I am leading a specific scope of activity, which is related to the engineering uh, development we have inside the support department. And we are developing uh, internally a lot of tools to help us and our customers uh, to improve the, the support experience. So it means to simplify for customers to provide us the data required to, to assist them, so to reply to their answers, to fix their problems problems, troubleshoot them, and this kind of things. And um, internally, we, we try to have a better knowledge on this information, on these problems which are known by customers, and, and try to, to, to make them easily identified and, and, and reported to them. So uh, that's the work I am doing uh, today, leading this development activity, but within uh, the support uh, department. And, and you're being very specific that you're focusing on our customers, which is true, right? That's, that's, yes. we, we, we both work for CloudBees. But a lot of the tooling that we're providing is available to the community as well. Exactly. Yes, because it's, it's really the, the DNA of CloudBees. Um, we have customers, but everything uh, we created at the origin is around Jenkins and Jenkins community is what is, um, making our heart uh, uh, living every day. So it's, it's really important for us because myself, I am contributor to Jenkins for, I don't know, more, more than a decade. And um, it's important to, to, to provide the best for the Jenkins community. This is a great tool. We are building our some of our products on top of it. And it's critical that this, this uh, product we will see today is something which is available for the community for free because there is no reason to not help the community to have healthy environments on their Jenkins deployments. It's really critical for all of us. It should not be something that we that we give only for customers. It's really something that we want to every Jenkins users and administrators. And this thing that we're talking about today is Jenkins Health Advisor by CloudBees. That's the official big name, right? It's yes. just, it's, it's branding, marketing, whatever, right? That's, it's what it is. Uh, but it's health advisor, but health advisor. Well, let's talk about this first. Why was advisor created? What, what, what was, why did that even come about? <laughs> At the origin, it's an internal tool. It's an internal tool created. So since a support activity, um, we are, this, when we switched from this many, many years ago at CloudBees, um, CloudBees started as a SaaS vendor. When you have a SaaS platform, it's 
more or less easy to support your customers because you have everything on your side. You can easily diagnose issues on your systems and what customers are facing. But when you start an activity, which what we did seven, eight years ago, when you start to sell an on-premise on uh, software, you are completely outside of the environment, of the runtime of the environment of, of, the, of the software. And those the problem you are facing is how you troubleshoot and you help others um, with us getting access to the system. Those, we, we started by creating this notion of support bundle, uh, which is a way for us to grab the data from a, from a given Jenkins controller. And then we created some tools to automatically grab the information from these bundles to identify the known issues because we have a large ecosystem with a lot of uh, version of Jenkins, a lot of plugins and so on. And those, there are some known issues. This version of this plugin is known to be buggy because of, or this one is known to have an incompatibility with the other one. Thus, we started to grab the information from the bundles and to identify these problems. It was available internally. We use that for support uh, at, at the origin. These were just bash scripts at the origin. And then we converted that to a real system because it was not really maintainable. So we created an application to do that for us. And why keeping it that internally while all Jenkins users can use it? There is nothing uh, which is preventing it. So we created advisor based on this system, which is allowing us to write these rules to detect issues and to report back to the, to the administrator of the instance. So you said a couple of things there. Number one, you said bash scripts were not maintainable. There's probably a lot of people that will <laughs> argue with you on that. I'm one of them. Again. <laughs> but, but I get it because it leads to the second thing you were talking about. And you were talking about a support bundle. Yes. You know, what is a support bundle? Why, why matter? And by the way, before you start answering that, if you've got any questions for our note today, over in the chat, which should be if you're watching on your desktop, there'll be a big chat. Just go say, hey, I got a question here, or just say, hey, I'm calling, I'm, I'm watching from wherever. So yeah, anyway, don't hesitate. don't hesitate. Ask, we're, we're here to, to serve you today. So however we can help you, you got questions, please ask us. Now, what is a support bundle? This is, this is like a big burning question because it's like, okay, yeah. what is a zip file? What is a Docker image? What is a, okay, let's boil it down. What is a support bundle? Exactly. Um, this the support bundle is uh, something which is generated by a controller. Uh, so we have a plugin for that. It is a support core plugin, which is generating an archive. So it is a, a simple zip archive with various data in it. Um, in the bundle, we try to have an overview of uh, what a controller contains. We have a lot of options to decide what we want to see because it really depends on the need we have with our customers. So we have the configuration of the controller. We can have some information about the operating system, about the GVM. We can have some dumps about the thread dumps, for example. Um, we can have some diagnostic uh, information like um, uh, deadlocks, if, if, if you had deadlocks on, on your GVMs, or if you had slow requests. If, uh, if a web request is taking more than 30 seconds, seconds we, it smells bad. So we have a, an output of this, of this information. So a variety of information, and we can have also the configuration files, the configuration of your agents, all these kind of things. So everything is classified. We dump all of this in this archive. Um, this is a mix of files which are uh, markdown files and uh, just um, the, the, the thread dumps we know from the GVM or these kind of things, and also the logs because everything when when you are in a support team, <laughs> what you spend a lot of time in is to read the logs to understand, okay, what, what is happening in the system? Thus, we have also uh, access to the logs of the controller. So this is all this data which are pushed in a, in a zip archive and uh, that we can, on our side, use to troubleshoot issues or just to better know what the controller is and is doing. Because Jenkins is a very big community. We know that we have a lot of versions of it. Uh, we are publishing um, hundreds of versions uh, in, no, one, one version per week and the LTS, which, yes, dozens of versions per year, but it's already a lot. And we have thousands of plugins. 
those it's impossible to 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 know everything we don't know what is in front of us those, this kind of catalog telling us you are using this version with this plugin and so on is really critical to troubleshoot the issues and or just to answer our questions because you won't answer the same the same uh, question with depending of the plugins you are using or the versions you have and this kind of things. So it's important to have a good vision and this notion of context with better understanding on our side. The customers we have in front of us is what is helping us. And these are these bundles which are helping us to do this, to have this knowledge. Right. And while we're, while we were going there for a moment, uh, I pulled up on the plugin site, the Jenkins plugin site, we pulled up support core. Mm -hmm. And this is where this is this plugin is not installed by default on a Jenkins controller. No. However, if you are a CloudBees CI customer, support is already installed. In fact, there's a different plugin. In fact, I'll go ahead and pull it up here. There's a whole document on generating a support bundle that also everything that we're going to be looking at here today and during the demo. If you look below us on YouTube, there in the description, you'll see links off to everything that we're going to be looking at today. So there is this documentation page about generating a support bundle, and it talks you through and reinforces basically everything that Arno was just talking about. But if you're a Cloud BCI customer, there is a a support a Cloud B support plugin that is based on Support Core. So in the community. You can use support core, but you would have to install it. If you're Cloud BCI, it's already installed. And we'll show you, at least from a Jenkins installation perspective, what it looks like, but it looks exactly the same, whether you're in Jenkins or in Cloud BCI. Now, here's, here's the big question. We've talked about the support bundle. We've talked about high level, what advisory is and how advisor helped us within the support organization. But, you know, how does, how does it, well, I can't even get anything to click there today. Come on. There we go. How does, <laughs> hey, it's technology, right? And how does, how does advisor help a Jenkins administrator, right? Because we've talked about, okay, here's all the things you can do, but it would, it would be it's, a lot of work. We're yes. eliminating work. Is that it? We're eliminating busy work for the Jenkins administrator? Yes, and what I would say is that we are trying to cover two things. Uh, firstly, it's almost impossible for any administrator. Myself, I was administrating Jenkins instances for years before jo joining CloudBees. Um, and even if I am involved in the community, it's hard to not say impossible to be aware of everything. With such a big community, you easily install dozens of plugins on your instance. It's impossible to track everything and to have in mind all the known issues and known problems uh, which that you may face uh, in your instance based on what you installed. Um, secondly, the, the question is to monitor your environment. Um, as an administrator, are you looking every day into the logs of your instance? Are you doing some grep to verify everything is good? There, there is no severe error. There is no, I don't know, a lot of issues like this. Are you spending your days to do that? You probably don't do it or you don't want to do it because it's a, you should not spend this time to diagnose and to have a look that everything is fine um, internally. This advisor really is designed to replace this and to provide you directly the knowledge and the information which are important and that we detected because those on the support side, we, we are doing this for, for years now and we see the recurrent issues or the most, uh, the most uh, complex or uh, damageable issues uh, customers are facing. So as soon as we see something which is recurring Often, or which is really damageable for, for, for users, we create a, an automation, a probe in advisor to detect the issue and to explain how to avoid it, how to fix it when the fix is available, or these kind of things. So it's really the idea to anticipate issues as much as possible. You will get the information as soon as it's detected in your system, you will get the information to, hey, have a look, you have this problem. Are you aware of it? And you don't have to scan 
all the channels everywhere on earth about Jenkins to know, oh, there is a bug in this plugin or this one, and I should take care of it. So these are the, the things that we try to solve for every administrator of Jenkins. And to see it's a gain of time, and it's how we make instances healthier, uh, which is important for all of us. And the way that the people receive this, the administrators, they get an email. It's that simple. Exactly. And exactly. we'll go through the process of this in a minute, but it all goes back to the support bundle, and then we'll go with that. Now, the page that I'm on right now is actually the Jenkins Advisor, Jenkins Health Advisor plugin page. And there is an example email that probably needs to be updated, Arno, by the way. Yeah. Um, okay. Um, just a little fourth wall there for you today. Uh, but it, it shows if there's security advisories, if there's performance advisories, those will show up. And if there is a solution, there will be a link off to a solution for you. Exactly. So that way you could do it yourself. But the chances of you understanding, like you could install support core and process the bundle yourself, but what you're not going to have is the knowledge that CloudBees support has because we're seeing from everybody. Exactly. So, okay. So I think now is time for the legitimate demo. Now this is live. So what I have here right now is a Jenkins controller. It is version, if you look down in the bottom right-hand corner, 2.263.1, so it is the latest LTS. I'm not brave enough to run a weekly, I'm sorry. I'm not. <laughs> Even for demos, I'm not brave enough to run a weekly. I'm not, um, I'm not doing it so. <laughs> no. Uh, I've set up a, just a little sample job here. There is also a, an agent connected and notice that, and, and unfortunately because of timing, so let's let's sort of pull back the curtain just a little bit. There is some async stuff that happens. So by the time that we actually complete everything today, I may or may not have information back because it just depends on when things arrive to CloudBees to get processed, what where it ends up in the queue, and then when it gets back to me. Right. So there's don't don't think of it as real time because it's not. But but this is all I've got right now. This is just installed, nothing else. So what we're going to do is log in first. And we're going to go to Manage Plugins. And I'm going to go to Available. I'm going to go to Available. It is moving. It is moving. I saw it moving. So. I'm going to type health, I'm going to search for health, and I'm going to go down to Health Advisor by CloudBees. Now, I'm going to do something I don't like to do, but for this demo, it will be fine. I'm going to say install without restart. That's just bad in general. Go watch general one of the other videos I've talked about. Of I, I typically don't like this, but for the demo, it's fine. Now, what you'll see here is, because I haven't restarted this controller since I initially, initially did the install. When we installed Health Advisor, it brought along three other plugins. It brought along Support Core, and then Support Core brought along Metrics, and I think Metrics brought along Variant. I think it's actually yes, that linear. Exactly. Okay. Yeah. So those are all just dependencies of each other. So now that we have this, again, I'm living on the edge. <laughs> if you look on the left nav, you're going to see support. That was not there before. Before I should have called that out. And if you go to support, this is where support bundles are generated. Now, let, Arno, I, I'll drive here a little bit, but I want you to talk about the different things that are here. Not a yep. whole lot of detail, but let's let's talk about, okay, why are some of these things automatically checked and others aren't checked and what yeah. all that means? Yes, um, by default, what we probably... Ah. The bundles which are generated, you have two ways to generate these bundles. The mm -hmm. first one is this one. Thus, you yep. manually generate a bundle from the UI, or you can use this, um, the API or uh, the, the command line, uh, the Jenkins command line, and you on demand generate a bundle. 
you select which information you want to put in your uh, in your bundle and by default what we what we propose is are the information which are the most relevant for 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 classical need of support um thus we will be able to review them but we have this everything about is the high level information about your instance and and and, and the plugins which are installed and this kind of things you have the the information about the especially the controller more than the agents um, agents information Okay. is slow to be to be downloaded thus yep. we try to find the right trade-off uh in terms of performances and in terms of uh, uh, uh of need uh for support activity um yes and what i wanted to say was the first thing that you can manually generate them and select every uh, option uh, you want or not but in the background of your instance what is important to know is that the plugin itself will when the instance is started and every hour after that, we will generate automatically one bundle, one new bundle with everything. And why are we doing that? It's just because if you have an outage, you have an outage of your instance as if you cannot access to the UI, you are not completely blind. You are not, uh, something is broken and I cannot, no, you have the latest bundle which was generated at the maximum an hour ago and you have here a dump of the state of your instance and you can potentially just detect in this bundle the origin of the outage you are facing so that's why we have this way to automatically generate the bundle every hour and man where you have everything right. and you have the ability to manually select the options here and to generate a bundle which is in general li lighter uh, with the information we, we are seeing here. And one thing that actually I noticed yesterday, this is a, a newer feature. Previously, yes. you could not delete these old bundles. I mean, exactly. you would have to go into the file system to delete them and you could do that. But now there's actually through the UI a way to delete bundles if you wanted to. You can, sort of you can delete them, yeah. you can download them since the recent version, it is the latest version, which is adding this yeah. uh, feature. And, but they are deleted automatically, but um, it's an algorithm where we keep, yeah. um, I, I will probably say something wrong, but we keep one bundle every hour for the, for the last day, one, bu one bundle for the last week, one bundle for the last month, and so on, so on. So it's an exponential yeah. uh, uh, Exponential decay. Is, yeah, so yes, it's basically exactly. a, a big curve that you Yeah, have to, just, yeah. just to keep one very old and you can compare the bundles uh, yeah. and see what happened. And we can see here that this one, when we first started out, all we had was just this all log, but now this automatically generated support bundle was exactly. done while, while we were talking. Now, this bundle was saved based on these default settings, correct? On all settings, those here, no, it's, settings. It's, a, okay. it's, it's by default, it's generated in the background. So this is the one which is generating when you start your instance or here because mm -hmm. you just installed the plugin. So you have everything, Every, all options are checked in this one. Oh, okay. So it's, uh, it's important to understand uh, that the difference compared to the manual uh, one that you can generate. Right. And in fact, let's um, let's spend a minute. I'm going ahead. I'm going to go ahead and download this bundle now. I will say, when I'm doing a manual generation, I typically go ahead and include anything that says configuration file. Yes. When I'm it's... when I'm debugging something personally, that's what I do. Is I go in and add these, and I think there's one other towards the bottom agent system. Right. I add those four. Yeah. Um, something we didn't mention, it is what is written at the top of the screen, um, is that you didn't activate the anonymization. Um, yep. We understand uh, clearly the problem of confidentiality, confidentiality and, and security, which could be uh, to generate this data. Thus, there is an option in the plugin to activate the anonymization. And the idea is to uh, replace uh, various kind of information which are known to be uh, to should stay private. Um, we are replacing um, all the agent names, uh, all the job or view names, uh, because you can have um, a 
super critical and uh, strategic project in your in your instance, and you don't want to share it with uh, with the rest of the world. Um, the labels we are replacing also the uh, uh, what I forget uh, the usernames for sure, uh, everything related to the users and uh, the IP uh, addresses. So this is a way also to configure and to activate it to to not expose if you want to share the bundle with someone else. Those if you want to use these bundles for yourself, this is what we said at the, at, the, at the origin, is that it's already, it's a good tool for yourself to better understand your instance and to troubleshoot your instance. Mm -hmm. so for yourself, you don't need to activate the anonymization. But if you want to share the bundles with an external entity, uh, like a software vendor, uh, like us, but uh, if you want also for advisor to anonymize the information, you can do it by activating this option. So what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to, I just turned on anonymization mm -hmm. and I checked the boxes I, that I like to check and I'm generating a bundle yes. and I am going to save this. But then I'm also going to download this previous bundle that was automatically mm -hmm. generated for us. And then what I'm going to do while you're talking just a little bit more, I am going <laughs> to go and actually extract these out. You won't see this on the screen. Uh, actually, you might see this on the screen, so I'm going to pull that over here. Um, I'm going to get these two bundles extracted, and then what we're going to do is I'm going to diff the two bundles. Yes. Like just across the folders, because this is what you need to do. It's like, should you always trust si shipping something off to a vendor? Exactly. You would hope so, but really, you should trust no one, right? That's the best security is you trust no one. Yes. So by taking a, a bundle that did not have anonymization turned on mm -hmm. and taking a bundle that does have anonymization turned on and then comparing them, then you'll know, okay, what's really getting, you know, hidden from, from the vendor. If it's like, okay, you know what? I really don't care about my IP addresses because they're all 10.0s. It's not, or they're 192, 168s. They're, they're non-routables from that perspective. So it doesn't really matter. But some people don't have that. They exactly. don't have that. So it's, it's, it's good to spend, and I'm sort of rambling right now because I'm just getting everything ready to go, um, mm -hmm. spending time to, you know, and again, even as I'm just talking here and I'm filling time, it's not like I'm spending a lot of time because you can literally do it this quick and understand better what your environment really is going to be. In fact, I am going to go ahead and pull this up right over here now. Okay. Mm -hmm. Now it's very small. I apologize for that. I don't know if I can, I've never tried. This one I should have practiced. No, I can't do that. Okay, so let's um, let's compare the about MD. Now we yeah. could, and in fact, let me just sort of bring, let me not sort of, let me pull this bundle over here. So here is the extracted mm -hmm. bundle. Right, so there's an about MD. That's going to be the first place you go and look if you extract a bundle, in my opinion. What do you think? I agree. After the manifest. The manifest is important, oh, okay. especially if, if you are discovering the support core and the support bundles, have yep. a look at the manifest. The manifest is important because it will explain you exactly what you have in your bundle. Okay. So the manifest is important. That's good. All right, so let's, let's actually diff the manifest. So, and I would expect it to be a little bit different because the times are different. Our times are different for sure, Time, but yeah. it's a full bundle versus a manually generated yes. bundle, if I remember. So you will have also this difference between what is uh, added in the full bundle compared to the one you selected some options. Correct, correct. So then you can at least compare these two. Now manifest, the anonymization uh, actually does matter. And we can see that right here. Hmm? Agent one was my agent name. Exactly. But over here on load statistics, we see computer underscore perfect pollution. Exactly. Don't ask me why it's perfect pollution, but computer <laughs> underscore does tell us, hey, this is an agent. Yeah. Computer underscore tells us that, or it's not necessarily an agent, it is a node. And remember that a node, a node can either be an agent or a controller. Yeah. It's just, it's a computer. Okay. Um, and then you could just sort of keep digging through all these different things here. But let's mm -hmm. let's spend a moment and go back to the about. Mm -hmm. Because, okay, yeah, manifest, you're right about manifest, but it's not that interesting. Versus, mm -hmm. I, hey, my opinion, right? I, I have the button. I can mute you. 
Um, it's a joke. I'm sorry. Um, but we could compare. Okay, yeah, this was the same one. Here are the big things to me when I take a look at an about. What version am I running? And again, I apologize for not being able to size this up. What JVM am I running? That's huge. Huge, huge, huge. Um, what are the startup parameters? The dash Ds, if you will. Then I also have a list of plugins. And I don't really use this one other than it's just there. I usually, again, it's it's interesting, but where I spend my time when I'm, when I'm going to look at it about is really this very top section. Yeah. This will tell me so much information. Just this one little section. And it, we're not going to spend a whole lot of time going through this. You can do this on, at your own pace. But the, the one thing I do want to pull out is, and there is not a diff on this, so let me go into plugins. Mm -hmm. So this lists out all the plugins. This is where I spend the next biggest part of my time. And this one I can size up. Because what I can do is, especially coming from services, if I was if I had a client that was having problems, I could create install the base instance that they were running, let's say in this case 263.1. And then I know exactly what ships with a 263.1, a, a, a clean install. And then I could compare it against what was actually installed and figure out, okay, what extra plugins were really installed. Nice. And that's very, very useful in doing a debug. Now, everything we've talked about here is actually pretty boring, right? <laughs> it's very exciting yes. from our perspective because it <laughs> makes troubleshooting much, much simpler. Uh, something we didn't mention, also another use yeah. case of having all this information dumped into a bundle is that it can be used also to reproduce your environment. You probably have the problem that you have your production Jenkins, but you want to have lower environments when you want to test and to verify that the next upgrade will be OK and so on and so on. And so this bundle and the ability to uh, to list the plugins and so on can help you to automatically recreate an environment, like you mentioned in your, in, in your PS uh, activity, but to recreate an environment similar to your production and then to automatically uh, test whatever you want, uh, just a new plugin or an upgrade or this kind of thing. So there are also all this information which are useful to uh, in terms of automation. This is what we do internally. We have some uh, some tools to recreate an environment from these bundles and this kind of thing. So it's a, there is even a Docker file, if I remember well. Uh, I think yeah. it's a still here, uh, which is generated and which is creating what you say. It's a, it's a Jenkins, which has exactly the same list of bundles, of bundles of plugins. Sorry. Yeah. And that is under the Docker directory, and there's a Docker file. So if we were to take a look at this Docker file, and that was you're not sharing your screen. Oh, like I said, when we take a look at this Docker file, uh, do 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 do. Yes, and that's probably going to open up in a different window. Yep, I'll bring it over. Okay. So here is, and I can also expand that a little bit. So. The very first line is, okay, which version of, in this case, Jenkins am I running? Mm -hmm. And then it downloads all of the specific version of the plugins. That's the key part. It's the versions of the plugins that are installed in, in this controller that are in this bundle. And this can easily be spun up and you can swap things out or test things out just to see how it works. Now, if you're not using Docker today, this probably wouldn't be very helpful for you. But this might be one reason to sort of play with it if nothing else. OK. So now that we have that, I'm going to close this up because my CPU is starting to run away. So we've done, we've looked at support bundles. You feel good with support bundles right now, Arno? We've, we've covered enough about specifically about support I bundles. See. We can just show the administration UI uh, for the for the anonymization. If you go back oh, to okay. manage Jenkins, yep. uh, just to finish on this topic, you can see that there is a new entry which should be under security. Uh, yep. Yes, here. And uh, what you shared uh, in the diff, here you have those, all ah. the values. 
uh, which are automatically uh, mapped in the uh, in the bundle. So you know, and it's a specific to your instance. It will be always the same uh, replacement which will be done. So you know exactly which information are replaced in the bundles you are sending to a third party and so on. So you, you, all this data uh, are replaced in your current instance. Um, it's because you don't have a lot of data in your uh, in your yeah. test instance, but you can imagine that uh, uh, with users and with jobs, you can have a lot of data which are replaced. Okay, cool. Now we're good with support bundles, right? Yes. Now we are. Okay. All right. So now let's take a look at what we do with. Now we can already sort of see it here. We see that get daily reports on security performance and or stability issues. Blah blah blah. So we can configure now. But before I click on configure now, I'm going to click on dashboard. And you'll also see that we have a red one at the top that gives us the same piece of information. <laughs> so let's go ahead and click on configure. Or actually, I could click on configure now. It will take us directly there. But I'm going to click on manage Jenkins one more time. And then click under troubleshooting. This is <laughs> where that link would deep, deep link to. Now, this is very funny. I'll, I'll say it. Invalid configuration. I haven't turned it on yet. It's not invalid, right? It's just because this, this needs a little bit of love, just a little bit. Um, but anyway, so the very first thing you have to do is agree with terms and conditions. Yes. This is sort of the key part here is this line that's right here. No data will be sent to CloudBees. Basically, this is the on off switch. Exactly. Right. That's that's all this, even though it looks scary, legal type stuff. If it's like, okay, I want to turn it on. I want to send some bundles for a day or two, check it out. And if you mm -hmm. don't like it anymore, then you can uncheck the box and you yes. don't ship stuff to us anymore. That's, that's just the on and off. Exactly. I'm going to leave it on for right now. I am going to go ahead and set up. And unfortunately, this one actually does work pretty quickly. And I'm going to send a test email. Now here's the mechanics of what's happening when I clicked on that send a test email. It's not probably what you think. We're not using postfix on a box or anything else. It's actually making an API call to the endpoint where the bundle would be uploaded to. Yes. Correct? Did I say that correctly? Exactly, yes. Okay. So it's just making an, an API call out to, and the endpoint, and I, I forgot to add this in. I'll add these notes in later. There is a knowledge base article about what items should be allowed or access should be allowed to uh, if you're interacting with CloudBees over the internet, if you will, like yeah. if, if you're trying to get there. One of these is the one for advisor. What is the subdomain for that one? Insights. Dot Insights. Dot .com. So yep. you have to open this access to to your firewalls uh, if you have or, or proxies, uh, depending on your infrastructure. And yes, yeah, so this uh, this test is to validate that you can ping the server and the server will be able to send you an email. And uh, thus you will be able to verify that the email uh, that you receive an email and it's not classified as spam, for example. Right. And because I received this message specifically, it was able to handshake. Yes. So it was if, able to send it, yes, to, yes. to, to contact you. Yeah. Right. So if, if you would have received a different message than what we're seeing here right now, then that means you've got a proxy, you've got a firewall, you've got something that needs to be dealt with. Yes. So even if you decide, okay, hey, look, I, I can't get that right right now, then you would, and you've already checked the checkbox, you would want to uncheck at that point mm -hmm. because otherwise you're going to be generating traffic that somebody's probably going to yell at you about. Exactly. Um, okay, so, and I'm not going to pull up my email for that. Just know that I've received an email for that. Mm -hmm. Now, I'm going to skip analyze data. We'll come back there in just a second. Reminder is basically, do you remember that red one that we saw about two or three minutes ago at the top of the banner? This is basically the nag or unnag switch. Yes. And I typically suppress it all the time anyway. Sorry, Arno. I do. It's just, <laughs> I do. Okay. So now I'm going to click on, under analyze data, I'm going to click on configure data. Gee, did 
Does this look familiar to you? It looks like support, doesn't it? it it's because it is, by the way. This is the widget. Now, these settings are the settings that will be generated. So here's the thing that happens with Advisor is once you activate Advisor, a bundle will be generated based on these settings, correct? Yes. And that's the key part is maybe you're working with CloudBees support if you're a CloudBees customer, and they may say, hey, look, can you add in, check these extra boxes for us because we need to debug a few extra things. But you may not want to send those things all the time. Maybe like, okay, I don't want to be shipping over my configuration files all the time from an advisor perspective. I just need to send over just the defaults, the about Jenkins, the you know, whatever it is. And if you're concerned, you know, generate a bundle that has this information, all these checkboxes, take a look at it. And that way you know what is being shipped off. Is there a way to get a copy of this bundle other than going back over to support? Uh, no, I don't think you so. You okay. cannot because we receive it, we trash it, and uh, yeah, just no, you cannot. It's a generated, it's deleted on your on your hard drive uh, automatically. Right. Just, yeah. Okay. And you also notice down here, right below the save button, when connected to our server, you're going to receive your first report within 24 hours. Now, typically it's faster than that, but I'm going to go ahead and click on save, and then we'll go back into that page one more time. And you can see that, hey, it's been successfully connected. And yeah. it'll tell us there. Now, I'm going to flip over to my console real quick. And I have actually been tailing the logs under the hood. Now, we can talk about a few more things. But what we will see in a few minutes, whatever that timer is now that's been scheduled, for lack of a better term, mm we would see a bundle, we would see messages here that says bundles been generated, bundles been uploaded, done, whatever it is. And those bundles get uploaded how often? Those every, those the behavior is to send one when the inst few minutes after the start of the instance. So when you yep. start an instance, six minutes or something like this after the start, you will have a bundle sent and one every day. So every 24 hours, you will send one. And uh, advisor, this advisor is verifying. This is what we explained at the beginning. We have a lot of rules. So today, I think we have in advisor uh, 200 rules in total. But uh, for public uh, open source instances, these are uh, two thirds of them. So probably 130 or 20, something like this, uh, which are available and, and, and useful for, 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 for public uh, instances. And um, these bundles those are sent every day, and we send an email, we send back an email as soon as we detect something new. So a new advice based on your bundle. There is something which change in your instance, which is a new problem or something you should improve, you could improve based on our knowledge, we will send you an email. So if you won't receive an email every day, you will send a bundle every day, but we will send you back an email only if something new is reported by your advisor. So if there has been a difference of any type, you would get a new email. Yes. If, if there were no changes that were um, advisor worthy, I guess is the way to say it. Yes. You won't receive an email. Exactly. So you, after you receive the initial email, you hope you never, and you clean up everything that's in that email, hopefully you receive no more. Exactly. Right. This that's is the goal. The goal, you receive your first email, you clean up everything and you never come <laughs> back from advisor, which is a good sign. Yes. Right. Okay. And I'm watching the log here and I'm not seeing it process, which is fine because I saw when I ran through this test yesterday, it took somewhere between five and 15 minutes because I, I ran uh, a couple of If you restart it, yes, if you restart it, but yes, I think it will take three, yeah, five minutes, I think. Yeah, uh, and, and that's fine. We, it's not a big deal. So yeah. it's this is one of those things that, and again, Advisor is completely free for usage, Yeah. right? What do we get out of it? Well, we get data. Right, so we can make better decisions and help out not only our CloudBees clients, but also the community as well, because all the data is helpful. 
and, and we get feedbacks. It's important that uh, that you know that you you can reply to the emails uh, to share with us the feedbacks uh, about the props uh, which are generated, and uh, and thus it's helping us. But because for sure props can be improved or the KBs or the knowledge articles where we are describing how to solve or improve uh, something, we can improve them, and we are continuously improving them. So it's also a way for us to have a better traffic on all this knowledge and to improve over the time the knowledge and the props we are creating. Creating those, so, um, so that's why it's important for us because it helps the community. It helps us to to provide something which is better for everyone. And here's, I, I think, that probably as we're starting to get close to wrapping up here. Here's here's what I would recommend: if you don't feel comfortable turning on advisor yet, that's completely okay. I get it. I get it. But maybe go ahead and install it. That way you get support core installed for you. Or if you want to just install support core by just without even installing advisor, just because, as I said before, trust no one, even as I'm talking to you. But install support core and start to understand what's in your bundles. And if you get to a point to where you feel comfortable with it, then you could go ahead and either enable or install the advisor plugin and start getting these email notifications that happen, obviously, the first time you're going to get one. Any yeah. changes that happen that advisor picks up, you get one. But eventually, hopefully, you don't get any other emails. Right? We hope. And <laughs> we hope. We, we hope, right? But and, and you can always opt out at any time. Yeah. You can uncheck the box. And it's like, you know what? We don't want to do that anymore. And that's completely OK. Yeah. But if it's helpful for you, and, and can you tell some of the stories about people that have enrolled in advisor and how that has helped them? There are a lot, but um, in general, what, what is happening is that we update this advisor every two weeks. Um, Zeus, we, mm -hmm. we already had in the past some, um, some outages, some problems on, on plugins, um, even in the community side. And Zeus, we were able to quickly warn the people that they were facing an issue, so there were some important issues about, uh, um, about the, the credentials or about the security, about these kind of things. And, and Zeus, we are able on our side, this is what also it is interesting with, uh, with advisor is that you do nothing and you have an updated report potentially every day because even if your instance didn't change on our side we probably improved or added new controls and thus we can report to you something that we didn't know yesterday and thus if something is going wrong on the community plugin or, or something is detected we can inform you directly hey have a look there is a problem here take a, either you have to upgrade the plugin again or because you just upgraded or maybe you have to, to disable it i don't know but those and and yes in terms of stories um we got a lot about um anticipating issues um you saw this problem of uh, this category of performances issues uh this one is very important because um the problem of performance issues is that in general they are taking a lot of time before being be, begin critical, beginning to be mm -hmm. critical. And on our side, we got a lot of good feedbacks about them because you don't know that some those, depending of the content you send in your uh, in your bundle, but we can, for example, um, give you advices about the configuration of some plugins. And those we can tell you, hey, have a look. You have configured like this, this plugin. It's a it can create a performance issue on your instance. For sure, every case is different. It will depend on the size of your instance. If you have an instance with uh, three jobs and another one with several thousands, you won't have the same kind of issues. But on our side, we try to anticipate it, to detect the issues by on all this information you provide in the bundle to, to tell you, hey, something is wrong or is going to be wrong. So stay care. And we can anticipate a lot of outages like this by just giving you a heads up on these non-issues that we are seeing on our side. So, uh, these are the kind of things that we that we and on our side. Let be let be honest. We are just happy to not have a case about an issue and non issues. It's just because right. customers who are able on our side to solve by themselves uh, their issues, they are in general very happy because it's better for them to understand what's wrong to fix it by themselves than to have to go into the support side and to troubleshoot with us. A problem, whatever it is, and we prefer then to focus on these complex problems, uh, which could happen uh, on our side. So, yeah, this is a good trade-off, and we try to move back to to the automation as much as as we can. This is our DNA uh, to automate things at CloudBees, and Advisor is a support automation. That's what we try to do.
Exactly. And I think, so let me restate a couple of things there. So if something changed in your bundle that advisor picked up, that could happen. But even if your bundle didn't change, but advisor changed because there was new information in advisor, you may still get an email. That's a key exactly. part too. It's always moving. You said it's updated roughly every two weeks. Yes. So it's it's definition list for a lack of a better term is, is updated every two weeks. Okay. Yeah. By the way, since we were able to ramble for a few moments, uh, there's the log. There's what happened. So <laughs> my my bundle uploaded, successfully uploaded, and it took about two seconds. Whatever. All right. This is the kind of information that you would get from that. In fact, you can see from this one line, this is advisor client, do yeah. upload file. That's what's happening. And if for some reason you had a proxy issue or a routing issue, you would see a big, long, ugly stack trace here. Yeah. Right? And you that's will have a banner in the, in the yeah. manager well, that's right. page. Yes, that would get added in as well. OK. So today we've talked about support bundle, advisor, gave you a little bit of a demo, or no. If you had one tip to give somebody that's administering a Jenkins controller today. Now, actually, before you answer it, here's the other thing to remember again, and I'll, I'll reiterate this. If you're running Jenkins, you will have to install support core. You don't have to install support core, but if you install advisor support, com support core comes along with it as a dependency. If you are a Cloud CI customer, all of this is automatically installed for you. All you have to do is just configure it. Those, those okay. plugins are already installed for you. Now, if you're going to give somebody a tip of something they should do today to make it easier for them to support and help with the care and feeding of their controller, what would that one thing be today? Honestly, is to is to generate a bundle. Even if even if you just do a test, even if you install the support core plugin and you don't use it later, I think it's just critical to know your system. And what you will see in the bundle, there is no way to see it in Jenkins itself for many informations because they are dispatched in many uh, many places. Those, you, you have the statistics. We didn't show you everything. You, you can do it by yourself, but you will see the statistics of your jobs and so on. So, so you can really discover by yourself a lot of issues just by reading the content of your bundle. And then, yes, if you want to go further and have automatically the reports coming back uh, from advisor, I can just advise to you to, to install it because it's really a gain of time uh, to receive uh, this, these reports and, and you have nothing to do for them. Um, but yes, at least knowing your system and understanding over the time, how it is evolving, it's really critical. When you manage an instance, I, I, I know it, it's, it's difficult. And, and you have all your users who can complain about a lot of things. And to assist them efficiently, you really need to know your system and need to know where are the limitations, what are, how it's evolving, and what you have in it. So yeah, this knowledge you have in, in a bundle is, from my point of view, critical for an administrator. And again, for both. Cloud BCI customers and for Jenkins users, how much does Advisor cost? Zero. 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 It's free. Free. It's free. free. And the and something we we forgot to say, but it's because it's logic for us. The code source of the plugins are on on GitHub are mm -hmm. are, uh, are open source. Those also, if you have any doubt about what there is in these plugins, if you have those security concerns, you can read the code yourself. You can, if you want. Yeah. Those, yeah, they are available. We are completely transparent. You, you, you have these plugins which are available for you and to assist you in your daily activities. Now, that being said, if you're using Jenkins, yes, Advisor and Support Core are open source. If you're using Cloud BCI, the support plugin that's there is actually proprietary and not that that one's not. But it, the same Advisor is used for. Cloud BCI so as for Jenkins. It's the exact same one. It's just support is a little bit different. Yes. And for people that are using Cloud BCI, primary, if, if you're familiar with it, it's because of Beekeeper is the primary biggest difference, at least that, yes. that I've seen. There's probably some other things, but yeah. Beekeeper was the big one. OK, Arno, thank you for hanging out today. Uh, there great. are a couple of informations. By the way, if you want to follow Arno, in fact, I've got to bring this up because <laughs> I, I had to laugh. Um, this this was um, 
You can follow Arnaud on Twitter. Yes. Now, if you look at his Twitter icon, I was trying, I was like, typically when I go to get pictures for people, I go to Twitter <laughs> for, for numbers of reasons. But when I went to here, it's like, uh, nope, I can't use that one. I need a real headshot. <laughs> so Arnaud is a version of the butler himself. But then also, if you need, if you look up in the upper left-hand corner, you can see a kitten, which is good. <laughs> I'm not a cat person, but kittens I can deal with. Um, finally, there's one more thing to hear too, and we don't have a whole lot of time to talk about it, but I try to talk about it every time I speak with somebody. There is a knowledge base article called Prepare Jenkins for Support. If you don't read any other knowledge base article that CloudBees produces, this is the one to read. And this one is, yeah, it's up, it, November was the last published date on that, but usually it's a little more active than that. Holidays, right? I'll blame the holidays. <laughs> this is, okay. this is a great knowledge base article to understand the things that you need to do. And this is specifically not necessarily if you're running inside of Kubernetes because the rules are a little bit different there, but this is a good one to understand, especially if you're still running on VMs, you need to understand these things. One of the big ones obviously is you limit if you're still on Linux. Yeah. But I wanted to pull that out again, follow Arno on Twitter. Uh, do you have any final words for today? Oh wait, I do have one more thing. Arnaud did a whole set, I keep forgetting about this. Arnaud did a whole session at DevOps World Nice in 2019, 18, when was it Nice? 18. 18, yes. 18, uh, about support bundles. And there is a link off to his slide deck down below in the description. Unfortunately, there was no video there, so you can't hear that. You should probably update that and we should do something for you to produce that. Yeah. Ta it's, tag uh, your it. Yeah. <laughs> um, because it's, it's, it's a very good, if, if you don't yeah. really understand support bundle, going through and even reading that slide deck will help explain some more things as well. Yeah. Yeah. It's a, it was a goal to give an overview like we did today, uh, yeah. a bit more uh, deeper. Uh, but yes, it's a, it's a very important uh, uh, slide deck. Um, and my final word, even I, I don't know, but it's uh, for me. I love the Jenkins community, and I want really to hear back from it. Um, I really want to improve this service. Um, we provide it for free because it's also useful for us. And thus, we will be happy to continue to improve this service for us and for you. Thus, do not hesitate uh, to share your feedbacks about uh, about advisor, about the support core plugin also. Um, we think that they are really important for us, but also for the community. They can help every administrator every day. So it's important to, uh, to, to share your feedbacks and to help us to improve this service. Cool. All right, Arnaud, I am going to boot you out. CR no. Thanks for hanging out today, man. I appreciate it. All right. And by the way, uh, if this video was helpful for you, can you go ahead and give us a thumbs up? It's like right down over there, if you look right over there. And uh, also, if you liked this content and you haven't subscribed yet to CloudBees TV, go ahead and subscribe. You go ahead and click on that red subscribe button, then click on that bell so you'll be notified anytime there is new content available. And you can also follow us. And you have any questions? You can follow us on Twitter at CloudBeesDevs, or if you want to just contact me on Twitter, you can reach me at Darren Pope. Now, hopefully, again, this was helpful for you today. If you've got questions, reach out to me on Twitter or Arno, and we'll see you in the next video.